you are rolling. So when I was 17, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, which is an autoimmune disease, and it's a permanent infection of my gut and bowel. It really sucked, and I was in hospital, and I almost died. When I came out of hospital, I was taking about 16 tablets a day, and if you include all the painkillers and supplements I was taking, I was taking about 24 or 25 tablets a day. Um, and one operation, and about a decade later, I'm still taking tablets. I'm not sure if you can see those, but these are the tablets that I take every single morning. Um, and I take two more of those big white ones in the evening. Um, and 5P is there for size reference. And it's because I take these tablets every day. I have to think about everything else that relates to those. So do I have enough? I'm going on holiday. Do I need to go get some more tablets, um, run around and get a repeat prescription? I'm going out tonight, can I get into the pub if they search me if I've got my tablets on me? I'm staying around someone's house, is there any, is my cache of meds that I've got split all over different people's houses in London, are they there as well? And because I have to think about this twice a day, not dying has always been fairly high up my list of mental priorities. So in 2011, um, I came across this talk called Infrastructure for Anarchists um, and its sister talk, Avoiding Capitalism for the Next Four Billion, which was by um, Ben Egipta at the 2009 Temporary School of, School, uh, Temporary School of Thought. Um, and in that talk, he talked about these, which is Simple Critical Infrastructure Maps, or SIM. You can find the documents, resources, and um, all the various graphics and images at resiliencemaps.org um, if you want to check them out. These maps were originally designed for, uh, to allow someone to orientate themselves around the infrastructure and that they exist inside in the event of a crisis. And the way it does this is by plotting the six ways to die. Too hot, too cold, illness, injury, hunger, and thirst. If you're not dying of one of these six things, then you're going to be dying of old age. Then what it goes on to do is that it puts the individual at the centre of the map, and then concentrically moving out from the, from the individual, we move through the various spaces up to the world level. And then it maps the infrastructure, or the means of not dying, against those concerns. So if you can see on the graphic, you can see there's cooking, um, everybody needs to eat, and that's related to the electricity grids which is related to the international um, energy markets. The cooking is also related to how and where you store your food, and that's related to where you get your food from, um, the derivative markets and the fuel markets. Of course, this is all. You also need fresh water to eat and cook, so that's related to your source of fresh water um, and the, the municipal water system. You've got waste and then, then the wider sanitation system. So this, in its very simple sense, is stack, or this is the infrastructure mapped around us against the means of not dying. And it's this infrastructure that is, it, it's unsafe <coughs> because it is infrastructure, it is under the structure. And when you start thinking about this massive web of technologies that keep you alive, the only interfaces that we have on a day-to-day -day basis are tap, turn, flush. Everything else is, is hidden um, and, un and unseen. Paul, who's, who's not here yet, he's speaking later, um, he calls this problem, problematizing the tap from the other side of the wall. So this is an infrastructure dependencies map, and you can see this is the stack of technologies, the various discrete levels of infrastructure, which are vertically aligned and yet interdependent on each other. Um, and this in its very kind of crudest diagram is, is, is an example of the stack, um, with its different levels and the verticals. Benjamin Bratton, who's writing a book called The Stack, um, primarily talking about the cloud. Um, he gives us some conceptual language around, um, around the different parts of the stack as you move up and down these verticals. Um, I find them quite useful um, in concept conceptualizing these things. And then there's the sim maps, which the more I've thought about them, it's almost as if the, the stack of vertically aligned infrastructures has been turned on their sides. Um, and now you're sort of peering down this cone of infrastructures out from the world level um, 
down to the individual level um, and seeing the interdependencies which, um, which they have. I've got an electric shock. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm a sci fi nerd or because I reject the idea that the history of civilization is the history of great men, but I have always believed that the history of technology is the history of civilization. So, time is also a factor when we're thinking about the stack. Joe Goldie, um, who's the author of a book called Roads to Power How Britain Built the Infrastructure State. She talks about how um, the reason that the English government got involved in road building during the Enlightenment was um, essentially to open up trade between Wales and Scotland because their, their premise or their thought was that if we open up trade between these regions then the Welsh and the Scots will stop having Barneys with the English. Municipal infrastructures like gas, sewers and water, um, these, are, these are the 19th century infrastructures which are, which are very Victorian in their thinking. Um, they're very command and control. You build a big water plant on the outside of town and then you connect everyone to it. But, the, but all of the business is, is secured in one place. And then of course we can go up through the stack. We have, um, we have the invention of the electricity grids, um, communications and then the internet and then, and then even um, satellites. One of the problems with thinking critically about technology is that uh, you could pejoratively be branded a Luddite. But that's okay, because one of the things that the Luddites understood was that certain technologies internalized certain ideologies, which is why when they went into the factories they only smashed certain types of machines, and not all of them. So if this is true, then the roads have this implicit or inbuilt ideology of capitalism. The municipal infrastructure has the inbuilt, um, this inbuilt ideology of <coughs> Victorian's command and control structures. And then also if we think about the internet and the horizontalism of the infrastructure and how that ideology has kind of um, either affected us or has been imbued within the technology. So in this sense, the stack, not only is it vertically aligned, but it also leans through history. And what that means is, is that the internal biases of these levels of the stack, they carry with us through time. So until, until those levels of infrastructure are gone or have been replaced, we're still subject to their invisible biases. So who controls the stack? Um, it's a bit more of a pertinent or public question um, that's in the media in light of the PRISM and NSA scandals um, with their... With their access to the, to the infrastructure level um, of the internet. We can also think about Israel turning off the water to Gaza in 2005. Um, they turned the entire water grid off um, just long enough for all of the plants to die in the greenhouses and then they turned it back on again and they've done it a number of times since. And then for me when I think about it, so these are my tablets um, in this bag here. This is part of my personal infrastructure, and the white ones are manufactured under license by Ferring in Denmark, um, distributed within the EU, and the component part of them, which is mesalazine, is under 11 international patents, nine of them are worldwide. Do I have a moral right to the access to these tablets? And if I could, do I have the right to make my own? So one of the things for me, is to see the invisible, the invisible biases imbued in these things, understand the infrastructure around them, and then try and do something about it. And that, for me, is statism. Thanks very much.